Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 4.2.0, and we're discussing <coughs> the hierarchy of the Adamic Covenant, or excuse me, of the Abrahamic Covenant, <laughs> which is actually a covenant with the Adamic race. There's two covenants that the Bible talks about that are eternal. The covenant in Christ, called the New Covenant, and the Abrahamic Covenant. Both of these are everlasting covenants, and the people within each covenant will endure forever. They're eternal covenants. The Abrahamic Covenant covers those that will be eternally on the new earth. And the new covenant deals with those who will be movers and shakers in the heavens, both eternally. Now, <clears throat> scripture teaches the two sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, will be given the names of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis 48, verses 15 to 16. Background, Jacob is in Egypt. Sees his son, Joseph delights in uh, knowing that his son not only has survived, but he is ruling the nation and <clears throat> turns his attention to Joseph's sons. In this respect, <clears throat> Jacob blesses them <clears throat> under the inspiration of of the spirit of Elohim. Verse 15 and 16, And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named on them. His name is Jacob, and changed to Israel. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now what basically is not taught are the other names and how they differentiate these two from the nation of Israel, <clears throat> these two tribes, which we're going to touch on a couple of things dealing with that. <clears throat> you have passages in Scripture in which the... The two sons of Joseph are talked about and separate from the rest of the tribes of Israel. Scripture teaches the experiences of the two tribes would sometimes be separate from the other ten tribes. Isaiah 44 verse 1 is an example. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant. Now he's referring to those that are named Jacob. <clears throat> There's only two, Ephraim and Manasseh. There's never a scriptural reference to the name Jacob being passed on to any of the other 12 tribes. So we find that this, <clears throat> whenever you see this, it's directing attention to these two tribes solely. Yet now hear, O Jacob, 
my servant. And Israel. Israel refers to the other ten tribes whom I have chosen. So he makes a distinction here between these two. Excuse me. Yes. The other ten tribes. Why are you saying ten and not twelve? Because Ephraim and Manasseh are two tribes. Okay. Distinguished from the other... Well, there's more than 12 tribes, if you want to put it that way. All right, I just want to make sure that we're speaking the same way. But language. we're talking about generically, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because it's talking, it's taking in consideration these that... These two half tribes. These two, yeah. yeah okay. <clears throat> these two were supernaturally brought into... Okay. There was 12 tribes before that. Right. So you said talking about 14. But we're talking here generically about the two tribes being considered 12... Uh, and whole. So only, it only mentions 12 tribes. It still calls them by 14. That's why I always refer to the other as 10. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up, Brother Chris. Thank you. Now we note that he, he gives a demarcation here. Yet now here, O Jacob, my servant, he from Manasseh, our servants, and Israel, the other 10, whom I have chosen. Now we note it's repeated verse 2 thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb which will help thee fear not O Jacob my servant and thou Jeshuron which is an ancient name for Israel whom I have chosen so it's repetitive so we find a distinction here which is uh, it, it's significant because the scripture mentions it twice. Mm -hmm. Now, this basically gives us an understanding <clears throat> that there's a distinction. What is that distinction? Scripture indicates that Ephraim and Manasseh are the work of Elohim. The ten other tribes are the work of YHVH. And should we understand exactly what you just said, because I was just thinking that. Should we understand that Elohim, because he can see the beginning and the end, recognizes that's his church, or better still, his church will come out of Ephraim and Manasseh. Yes. That's what I'm really trying yes. to say. Yes. Thank you. We see this illustrated in Isaiah 43, <clears throat> verse 1. But now saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, mm. he from Manasseh, and he that he that formed thee, O Israel, Y H V H. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. So the two speak as one. But we see the inset here. One is eternal, one is temporal. In the eternal state, <clears throat> Ephraim and Manasseh had a prior relationship with Elohim. Just as he had a prior relationship with David in eternity. In this relationship continues in this life. Yes. Yes. Now, we find also in the judgment, there's sometimes separate judgments. Isaiah 42, verse 23 to 24. Very rare that we see Elohim being referred to as a creator and YHVH being referred to as a former in the same verse. That's excellent. Well, yeah, there are other scriptures where that's done too. But there aren't a ton of them, are there? <laughs> no, no, not a whole lot. That's what I'm saying. Not a whole lot. Okay. But it's done to give you an understanding of the relationship between YHVH and Elohim also. Right. Isaiah 42, 23 to 24. 
Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil? The word spoil there is plunder. And, and Israel of the ten tribes to the robbers. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. So we see that there is a, there is a distinction here that you will find in the history of these. <clears throat> and what we find Ephraim and Manasseh are given into the care of YHVH to connect them to Israel. Go back to Genesis 28, uh, Genesis 48, 16. The angel, YHVH, which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them. In the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. This is Elohim talking through Jacob to YHVH. Just as the Father gave the sons into the hand of the Lord Jesus to develop, so is he giving Ephraim and Manasseh into the hands of YHVH to develop along with the other ten. YHVH chose the ten. Elohim chose, chose the two. They're connected now supernaturally in this passage of Scripture. And we see that this is the doing of the Father. I wonder just now how it is, because Jacob knows the difference between Elohim and White 3 h why, mm -hmm. why he's specifically pointing to White 3 h for the blessing. And now we know. Yes, yes. Spiritually, you can gain understanding, only spiritually. Mm. In this. Now, what we find, that Ephraim and Manasseh, when... The revolt took place under King Solomon. The prophecy was that there would be a separation in the tribes. Ten tribes would be taken from him because of his disobedience and his idolatry. Two tribes would be left in Jerusalem, that's Judah and Levi. The other ten would be taken north with the capital of Samaria. The leader of this was Ephraim. The king was an Ephraimite. Oh, really? Yes. And you find judgments in there dealing with <laughs> the displeasure of YHVH in this taking place. I notice there's also a king Manasseh. <clears throat> he yes. didn't do too well either. Most wicked so. king. It, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, now, it brings that on that note. Scripture indicates after their return to the promised land. In other words, the gathering. Ephraim and Manasseh will, because of transgression, suffer greatly in great tribulation. The just will refuse to get it together. <laughs> Jeremiah 30, verse 2 to 3. <clears throat> They're going to lead <laughs> the other nation, mm -hmm. the other Israel, Israelite nations, to the point where this judgment comes down on them. Jeremiah thirty, verse two to three.
That might be another reason why they stick together. They know instinctively. <laughs> <laughs> There's pain coming. Yes. Pain. There are going to be consequences. Yeah. Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. So he's given Jeremiah this prophecy, this revelation, for him to write it down. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord. Now this is, YHV, uh, this is uh, Elohim. The days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and Judah saith the Lord and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it it's the gathering <clears throat> and these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah For thus saith the Lord we have heard a voice of trembling of fear and not of peace Ask me now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Whether do, do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail. And all the faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. So my great tribulation. It is even the time of Jacob's. Trouble. So Ephraim and Manasseh are being singled out. Why? Because they're the main cause of the stumbling block for the whole nation of Israel. <clears throat> the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. Whose yoke? Satan. Off the neck of even Manasseh. Off the neck of even Manasseh. You're gonna go through they're gonna go through egregious torment, tribulation. <clears throat> well actually it's more the beast than it is Satan. Okay. But the Satan's doing his share here anyway. Yeah, oh this is this is gonna be egregious. And will burst thy bonds, thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up unto them. So this is going to take them directly into the resurrection. Uh, into the age. The, uh, the great tribulation is going to be a hellish, horrendous time for the Israelites. At what point do Ephraim and Manasseh collectively comprehend that they have a link directly back to Elohim. Gathering. And those who refuse to, well, of course not, because everyone else is just going to refuse to even listen to it. So they will go into, I guess, um, eternal torment, not comprehending that the whole reason that they exist is because of the two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And the whole reason that they've been so blessed that America is the most powerful nation on the planet is for that very reason. Sure. Sure. How many people know that? I only knew it only very recently, so I imagine it. Not too many. <laughs> it's not an accident. Brother Jones. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm making a break right in the middle of this study, but I'm going to speak it out. And if you guys don't like it, then you can throw me out. So now, Mr. Jones, you answer a question. I was talking about when, when the voice, when, when everybody in the whole world hears the voice, okay? At that point, you're either going to suffer the judgment or you're going to be spared from it. One way or another, it's going to be a, a shocking incident that nobody can prepare for the way you would prepare for a disaster what we could do is we could study, be made aware of 
the procedures of how they're all happening. And so while it's happening, we are very well aware of the time sequence of in it. And we are looking for certain things in the, in, in the catastrophe that's happening. Yes. And as a result of hanging on to that knowledge, knowing we're, we're going to go through this, we're preparing for it, we're, we're equipping ourselves for it, we will be spared from it. Yes. If you don't have that confidence in you right now, then you better start studying a little bit more than you currently are, whatever time that is. Brother Jones, I have to, I'm, I'm compelled to make this, this mm -hmm. plea to everybody yes. that's listening. Yes. Well, that's it's Zephaniah, time. the second chapter. Two and three, absolutely. A, a word to the wise is sufficient that it, when it does happen, you may be hid. Yeah. Right. Unless they're not really wise. Yeah. Each person makes its own decision. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Scripture indicates that the second coming, it's not really the second coming, it's the final coming of the Lord, Ephraim will be the leading tribe in organizing Israel. In organizing Israel's return to the promised land. In other words, Ephraim will, both of them, will repent, be used Ephraim and Manasseh are going to be the lead tribes bringing the other tribes out of bondage back to the promised land under the direction of the Lord. Jeremiah 31, verses 7 to 9. <clears throat> Seven and nine? Yes, sir. For thus saith the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob, Ephraim and Manasseh. Why? Because they finally got their act together and they're taking the position that they were called to do to be the shepherds of the rest of the nation. Sing for Jacob and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth. And with them the blind and the lame, the women with child, her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. So you have the Israelites coming from the four quarters of the earth. You have angelic um, transportation of the <clears throat> new covenant saints back to the earth. This is a gathering back, the second coming. <coughs> Verse 9, they shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Mm -hmm. Why is he saying that? Because Ephraim is going to be out the lead. Uh, <clears throat> bringing, directing, um, comforting. They're going to blanket the rest of the people, because these people are coming out of abject torture, the hands of the beast and uh, Satan, you know, and the rest of the Luciferians are just being put down now by the sons of God. <clears throat> and in that respect, they're coming back to the land. So you have a twofold thing happening here. You have Daniel 7, turn to Daniel 7, chapter.
Daniel the seventh chapter, verse eighteen. <clears throat> For the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So you have the new covenant saints setting up the kingdom and authority. You have the old covenant saints coming into their positions of, of freedom because the new covenant saints have put down the enemy. And in that respect, all these things are happening simultaneously. Israel is being released from the captivity of bondage to the Luciferians. The saints are judging the captives. The Lord is overseeing everything that's happening on a pluralistic scale. There's still things happening in the heavens, subterranean region. This is being giving you a picture of the surface activity. All this is taking place simultaneously. Ephraim and Manasseh now are taking their rightful place as servants because that's what they are. They're not sons, they're servants in the new order. What's the new order? The establishment of the kingdom over Israel. And at the same time, so this is the earthly spear then you have the heavenly sphere, which is a higher perspe pers perspective that the prototokas are engaged in. What we're looking at here is a picture of a greater uh, understanding of events taking place at the second coming. What event, if there is an event, causes people in the Manasseh to recognize that they hold leadership responsibilities in the gathering? for Israel. Great tribulation. So they wake up as a result of great tribulation. Most definitely. That's what it takes. That's what it took um, the saints that missed the rapture in the communities come out of great tribulation. It is going to be an eye opener. And uh, basically if that doesn't doesn't do it, nothing's going nothing to do it. it. Sure. Great tribulation is going to be people that determine they're not going to take the mark of the beast, mm. which is a later on event. So all these is all this is happening is just a prelude to the second coming. At the second coming, the transfer from <clears throat> the things that will comprise the end of the age. So we should understand that <coughs> the church coming out of Ephraim and Manasseh represents the majority of Ephraim and Manasseh and the minority of Ephraim and Manasseh stay mosaic. Yes. Yes, and Ephraim and Manasseh are calling the shots for the other tribes, right. which basically stay mosaic. Right. So in this respect, they have a pivotal, pivotal position mm. to occupy with great significance from the earthly perspective. Ephraim and Manasseh don't they're under the Abrahamic covenant. They're not under the new covenant. We have to understand that. Sure. Which is an earth-centered covenant, which is an eternal covenant, but it, it, it basically deals with the authority that they're going to carry. Israel is going to be the number one nation on the earth. Sure. And it's going to be basically directing the other Adamic groups on the earth. That's part of the Abrahamic promise. They, in turn, <clears throat> will be directed by the Prototokos in heaven under the Lord Jesus. So you have a hierarchy here of uh, activities. There's a lot more in this that's being said, but it takes time to mine it and to uh, contemplate, to understand it. And uh, this, is, this should be being taught by the church, but it's not. But that, be that as it may.